So, uh, as you can see, the snow has melted, most of it anyway. There's still a few patches, and it's still deep not too far up from here, but the rain has come and washed it away, and uh, now we're having a little break in the rain, and we're out here having ourselves a little walk. And, uh, with the snow gone, you know, everything just looks so bare and flattened and open, and uh, coming up the trail here, you know, thinking about years past, some of our former experiences, you know, we get up here to a spot on the trail, and you look over there, and you can see our orange flagging. I don't know if the camera's going to pick it up. It's right in there. There it is. You can see it right there. So that marks the spot where the cloaker event happened. You know, so I'm looking at all these flattened leaves, and I'm thinking, well, this could be a good time to walk over there and see if there's any new tracks in the area. So we kind of started walking off over here and and uh, exploring, and you know, while keeping in mind that this is a good opportunity for Jack to have his first experience. If anybody's listening, but uh, so yeah. We got over here and I'm kind of looking at the layout and, and you know with all the leaves down and, and everything open like it is, it really is an excellent opportunity to take another look at this site and be able to really picture what happened out here that day. And we were right back over here up on a little hill and uh, my camera just happened to be facing this way when it happened. So. You know, we came back out here in the weeks that followed and we did a lot of recreations and, and uh, took a look at it from every angle. You know, we discovered the two sets of footprints that were uh, nine inches long. And the one started right here. See where the log is down here? They started right there, came over this kind of partially buried log in the ground, and we followed them over here where... Uh, these little trees that now have more debris laying on them were smaller and that debris wasn't there at the time, but I watched it mowing over those little trees as it ran. I mean, I can, I can remember the hair flying in the breeze it was moving so fast and these little bushes getting mowed over and then we believe that's where it jumped into is this little hole right down in there where there's still some snow. And uh, from there, I don't know where it went, but that was where I last saw it, was when it jumped right down in here. And that's where the tracks led us. Yeah, yeah. there's uh, a lot of little things in here that accumulate. But we're going to go see something really cool. Not as cool as that one at Sandy's place, but still no. pretty darn cool. Nothing's as cool as that one. Look out, Gabby. Come on. They're coming. Keep going. Okay, here's a good one that was uh, from about a year ago. Broken tree here. Okay, so Larry. Remember we showed you this tree when you were here that had been snapped off there and was hung up over there? Uh-huh. So I guess it was maybe six months or so ago. We got a new break in the middle of it. Something hit this hard enough in the middle that it broke it there, but it didn't knock down either end. Both ends are still, still suspended. Wow. That's pretty cool. Yeah, so something had to have hit it really hard and really fast right in the middle to break it there to not break these smaller yeah. pieces that are supporting it at either end. Yeah, that had to have been, you know, yeah. 
like a thrust and not a hang, you know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, something it, hard and fast. For any amount of time, the heck was that? Did you see that? Out. Sam's been checking it out. What so the heck is it? There's there. something right there. Did you see that? Yeah. Sam heard it. I saw him react. I just saw something small and black take off that way fast. Boy, I hope it was on camera. You know, yeah, like a thrust and not a hang. You know what yeah. I'm saying? Yeah, something it, hard and fast. For any amount of time, the that heck was that? Did you see that? Down. Sam's been checking it out. So anyway, I was over there. We saw right on the other side of this, right in here, it was where. A patch of forest dropped and fell to the ground and appeared to grow underneath here. When I saw it was when it was about right where I'm standing right now. It just popped up and it was facing this way. It had its back to me and it took off running that way. So for an instant the tree that was in front of me blocked it from my view but then I could see it continuing as it went over the bushes and and all that uh, debris that was there, the old logging uh, scraps, and then it went down into the hole. So then we had the second trackway that came from right in here, and it went right through these trees, and it was right in here where uh, the deepest of the nine inch tracks was, and it was probably four inches deep at the toe, maybe three at the heel, really pressed down into, you know, you, know, you can see how soft this is in here really pressed down into that and and that's a cast that uh, Claudia Ackley did uh, that was the only one that was uh, deep enough to really show and uh, hold anything to uh, make a cast out of so anyway the point with that is is that these trees bent were seen pushing this way at the same moment that uh, well, a fraction of a second before the cloaker event happened, we had one set of nine inch tracks going this way, and we had one set of nine inch tracks going that way. So that we know there's two creatures. Whether or not the anomaly itself consists of one, two creatures, whether or not it's just a branch that's falling that was part of the event, you know, that's, that's all up for speculation. You know, I'll let you decide that. All I can tell you is what really happened, what we found afterwards, what we saw. So yeah, the second set of tracks started here and went back up over this log and then uh yeah so there was like scuff here scuff here scuff on the other side over that log around this pile of debris and back and around in that direction toward where the other one had run from this side of this pile and gone that way so and and another thing that was cool about these was the average distance between these footprints was around uh, I think 54 inches now that shows a creature that is really moving it's got some speed going behind it you know every step is reaching for as far as it can go because these nine inch tracks weren't the tracks of a huge creature the one I saw pop up over here would have been approximately five to five and a half feet tall and that correlates to the size of that footprint for a Sasquatch so um, Oh yeah, and, and there's no doubt what I saw was a Sasquatch. I mean, it was black, hairy, upright, no neck. It, it, it had this odd triangular shape to it because it was almost as though its, its arms and shoulders came right out of below its ears, you know, where, where a neck should be. And, you know, it was running as fast as it could possibly go on two feet. There is no doubt in my mind whatsoever that this was a Sasquatch event. And considering the tracks that we found, two creatures approximately the same size, same age, possibly twins, were involved. Okay, so now that said, it was only just right over here, let's walk over this way, where at the same moment that all the crashing and everything happened over here with this event, uh, the rest of our group had gone up and we're just sitting right over there on the trail. If you can see that, uh, let's see, the log right there. They were sitting over there. So that's not that far and you know, as, as if you've ever used a camera, things on camera are actually a, a lot closer than they really appear to be. Uh, 
that looks like it's a dis good distance away, but it's really only about uh, 100 feet. At the same moment that all this happened, uh, Juanita was sitting there with her little dog in her lap. The little dog looks this way, barks. She looks this way, sees nothing, and lo looks back across the trail over here when she sees the small, what she describes as a small black monkey come head first down the tree and went off into the bushes. So we know there, there were at least three, okay? So now that day when all this happened, um, we had kind of spread out when we came up the trail. My dad, Juanita, and uh, Lee had gone and sat on the log over here to wait for us because they'd already seen the tour of what we were doing. But everybody else circled back off the trail over to here where we were standing when the event happened, except for Sandy who went farther back. She wanted to uh, check out her gifting area back here. So when all of this happened, we came out of the woods, talked to these folks here, got their take on it, and then we all headed up the trail. Several minutes later, Sandy came out this way. She didn't know about anything that had happened. All she hears is a woman's voice from up here on the hill, what sounds like she's calling her children. And originally our plan had been to meet her up in this direction. But after, you know, what happened, we went the other way, not wanting to uh, crowd them or make them uncomfortable in any way. So when Sandy came out, it could be possible they thought we had all left and mom was calling the kids up on the hill. So, uh, yeah, it wasn't us. <laughs> we went that way. Because, <laughs> you know, a lot of this is based on the blurry picture in the video, uh, the footprints that we found, um, the witness accounts. Not everybody saw everything. So, you know, we have to piece it together to figure out what happened. And I think we've got a pretty clear picture. Um, so, to add to that, you know, to make that even more solid, uh, two weeks later, I was uh, coming across the bridge in the car with Gabby. Uh, I saw eye shine on the corner as I was coming off the bridge. Gabby reacted. Uh, you know, she's really tough when she's in the car. And all that. So... We got to the cabin, I took her inside, I left her in, I grabbed the thermal camera and I walked back out to the edge of the driveway and just took a look down on the corner. So first I see one somewhat large triangular glob that isn't shining real bright, but it's obviously alive, it's obviously moving. And then I see a second uh, triangular shaped blob comes out from the riverside and is beside the, the second one. So now I've got two, they're the same size, the same, same shape. And I'm thinking, well, that's weird, you know, because they're just triangular shaped blobs. Normally we have a lot more definition on the uh, thermal camera and, and you can see enough detail to make out arms, legs, uh, necks, tails, you know, and such. But uh, I couldn't, they were just kind of triangular blobs moving around. So then uh, the third one comes out. Now the third one, that's where this gets interesting because the third one, was exactly the same shape as the other two, except it was tiny in comparison. So this was a baby. So what other creatures are triangular shaped and have two adults or bigger creatures, whether they're adults or not, is, we don't know, but with a tiny baby at the end of October that are in the shape of a triangle. So I watched them. I had the recorder going. Um, one of the problems with our thermal camera is it doesn't record quite as clear as what you can see so unfortunately the footage that I got is uh, inconclusive but what I could see through the camera was one of the creatures took a few steps to the left and then uh, or the, excuse me the right and then it, it appeared to put an arm up it reached up well that to me was validation for what I thought I was seeing as far as these being the same creatures that were involved two weeks earlier with the cloaker event so, uh, yeah, I didn't get the baby on camera. Uh, by the time I got it recording, it had only showed itself just the once, uh, came from the left and went to the right into the woods where it disappeared. I did get the other two creatures on camera. Uh, like I said, they're blurry, inconclusive. We made several attempts to reenact it using uh, myself, Sandy, and Gabby. Um, we never could get it quite right. Um, one thing that we thought was odd was that no matter what we did, we always stood out brighter than the creatures in the video. Even Gabby, when she was soaking wet, um, when we were wearing layers of wet clothing, we were still considerably clearer than um, 
what was showing up on the on the video and on the camera but uh yeah so that just kind of adds a little bit more of the mystery to it so anyway one thing we did figure out by doing the reenactments was the basic size they uh the two creatures that i saw the triangular shaped creatures the bigger ones were slightly smaller than sandy bigger than gabby smaller than sandy so uh that puts them right in line for the ones during the cloaker event that left the nine inch footprints pretty cool huh so yeah i just thought being out here today nothing new has happened we're hoping jack's gonna have his first you know real sighting here soon that i will know he is aware know what's going on and hopefully he'll be able to deal with that in a good way but uh yeah so i just thought it was a good day to take another look over that area go over some of the details of that day and uh yeah good day for it so it's like it's starting to rain again we probably ought to finish our walk and head for the barn what you think kids you ready shall we go all right let's go come on come on jack let's go all right we'll see y'all next time bye can't be still. He's pretty wound up. Hello everybody. <laughs> There's Jack. <laughs> He's a happy guy. Hello everybody. 